name is T.T. Sessoms, and I am the writer of Different Shades of Lipstick, which is being presented by Pushing Through the Pain. And today we have with us LaShawn Boyer, who is the director. Hi, LaShawn. Uh, hi. Hello, everyone. And we also have Miss Tiffany Broward. Hi, Miss Broward. Hi. How you doing? Hi. <laughs> doing great. Miss Broward plays the nurse in Different Shades of Lipstick. And Ms. LaShawn is going to start off our interview questions for today. Hi, Ms. Brower. Thanks for being with us this evening. Um, no problem. No question. problem. Awesome. First question we have is, um, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I was born and raised in Newport News, Virginia. You know, been here all my life, so I never traveled. I lived outside of Virginia. Um, I'm very, you know, easygoing person. You know, I'm a single mother, have a five-year-old daughter. Um, I do a lot around the community before, you know, I did the acting, you know, getting involved, doing outreach and everything else. So with me, I just, I'm just kind of like not a homebody, but people know me when I be a, do go out and network with people. So, yeah. Awesome. And I love to cook. <laughs> love to cook. Okay. What's your, what's your specialty meal? I do a lot. My, I love to do fried chicken. I'm a beast in fried chicken, um, fish and steak. And I do, I like a shrimp, um, shrimp alfredo or whatever. So I do a lot. Awesome. All right. <laughs> That's good. Well, the next question I wanted to ask you is what is it about acting that you love? Well, what I love about acting mostly is mostly the characters. It's the theater. It's being somebody else besides yourself. Um, when you play in a role, you're not playing yourself, but you're playing that character. And it, it gives you a good feel on how that character is and their personality than yours. Certain things that you wouldn't do, the character will, does, will do it. So you take yourself outside of your comfort zone and you do it and it feels great because you're able to act it out, you're able to express it. And then when you see yourself on camera or see yourself on video, you're like, wow, I really did that. That's me, but I'm not me, I'm somebody else. <laughs> yes well i would like to ask how did you feel um filming this role um that you're in um it feels different because this is my first one usually i do theater where they don't do a lot of filming you just do your presentation and go on your way but this one's a little different it's about the characters and about women you know coming together from different walks of life and they you know group as friends and they going through things and they come together on a common ground. So I think with this one, it's going to express a lot of drama, suspense, secrets, everything coming out. It's just like, this is really good. It's really going to, it's going to blow your mind. It's really going to blow your mind. You got to be there to watch. You got to see it come out in rare form. Yes, yes, yes. So were you nervous or pretty comfortable? Do you feel? I was a little nervous when I started out with the role. I I, I was playing another role, mm -hmm. but you know things you know you know happen for a reason, and you know I became a backup. So basically, I'm doing the nurse right now, but I am a backup for another role. So other than that, you know, what I'm saying it's been pretty good. You know, I'm feeling my character. I'm feeling who I am and know who I am as an actor, what my limits are. So mm -hmm. it feels good to be amongst other actors, and you can correspond ideas and get to know yourself while. Of the characters. Yes. So, yeah. yes. Now, you. I remember when you auditioned, you auditioned in person. Yes. Yes, we I did. I auditioned. Yeah. Yeah. Live. Yeah. Me and Mary. Yeah. Yeah. I, yes, I did. I auditioned for the role of Jackie. Yeah. And I did very good and I got the role. And everything was fine, but you know, things happen, you know, unexpected things, you know, family situations. So, as of right now, I'm doing the nurse role at this point, but I do understand the role of Jackie, how she is being a single mother of two girls. And sometimes when you look up for love, sometimes you don't have the time because you're raising two girls and trying to be a mother and wear many hats. So when she met this guy, you know, she thought he was everything, the cream of the crop and all that, but she didn't know because he blindsided her thinking he was the Prince Charming. He was a wolf in sheep clothing and did something very drastic to her. It kind of changed the world in a way. And sometimes with us women in real life, we get caught up when looking for love in the wrong places and going to these areas that we shouldn't go. We think this guy is perfect and he and they really not. And it and it not only affects you, it affects your children. Yeah. So 
it, you learn a lot about that. So I learned learn about about that role. You know, I feel her. I understand her. I understand the nurse. You know, you don't know much about the nurse, but you understand what her position is when she's working and doing her part. So this is a lot for Black women, basically, you know, expressing themselves, but also letting you know the trials they deal with every day. Yeah. Yes, that's true. Yes, yeah. definitely. How was it working with the the cast and the production team so far through this through this whole journey? Because you've been a, there from start one. Yes. <laughs> it was different, you know, it's a transition. Everybody had to get used to people's schedules and getting used to the role. I had to get used to a lot of things, you know. You know, I have a lot of responsibilities outside of the acting. So I had to juggle that as well as, you know, the acting. But once you balance it out, it's, it's great. Get along with the cast is really good. You know, I love Tina. She's like a fire in disguise. It's like when she comes on there, she lights it up. Anita, she's a little timid, but she's right there on her duty doing what she needs to do. And then you got Brenda, you know, doing her thing. And then you have Sheila. And Sheila's the one that I feel that's going to be the, the turning point of herself and what she wants. And she's going to, I think, I ain't going to give it too much information, but I'm going to say that this is going to be the turning point of what she wants in her relationship and what she wants for herself. Mm -hmm. So you learn a lot about these females and what they do, especially Jackie. That's going to be the turning point of what, what decision she's going to make. Is it going to be for love or for her children? And sometimes it's hard to pick those two when you want love so bad, but you got to choose your children first. And that's so much of a difficult situation. And we all dealt with that all the time. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. No one wants to be alone. <laughs> that's real. You're right. Exactly. Yes, that's so true. So in, in saying that, besides yourself, which actor in the in the um, production would you say is just going to blow the people away? I'm going to say on this one, Tina. Tina's going to blow people away because she's coming in there as a single woman. She's carefree. She do her gold digging style thing and she messing with no broke man. And when she comes to her friend and talking to her friend, it's like, her whole world changes because something happened to her and she got to come to realization that, you know, I can't keep going like this for a long time, I'm getting older. You know, I want things in my life. I have goals. And mm -hmm. sometimes, you know, when we used to doing certain habits, we, we're not used to a change. And sometimes with her, she had to get used to that change. She had to change the way she think, how she approached things, how she approached men and just different things. And I think this, this character here, she's going to really, She's going to blow your mind. She's going to make you think like, you know what? I was a teen at one point in time. I was out there doing what I wanted to do. Now I, I flipped it around. I could still be a successful woman and still get my own without depending on a man. So, yeah. Awesome. Thank That's you. True. That is true. Now, look, how did you start <laughs> off in acting? Yeah. You have a story. <clears throat> <that>. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm that coughing. <laughs> Um, I really started acting when I was really young. Um, I was four years old um, at the time. You know, I could, I didn't talk. I had a stuttering problem. Mm -hmm. And it was just kind of weird. My cousin, you know, Felicia Hasty, she used to sing at Norfolk State. So mm -hmm. she would do theater a lot and sing a lot. And I would hear her do car wash and the whiz and stuff. So one day uh, she was doing her role and she was in the hallway and I was just mimicking what she was saying. And then after a while, I got better at singing, getting the notes down, and then saying the role. And she would listen. She was like, Grandma, listen to, listen to Tiff. And she'll hear me. And then she'll say, OK, I want you to repeat what, what happened on soap operas on Young and the Restless. And mm -hmm. when she comes in and stuff, you know what I'm saying, I'll tell her what happened, what the scenes were, and whatever, and all that. So it was different. So I got a chance to really show. Oh show my true colors and everything and all that. So it was, I, that's how, that's how I began. That's how I began. That's how everything came unfolding. That's how, you know, things start to open up. Excuse me, I'm sitting there signing something. So it just kind of, you know, opened up for me on a lot of doors and it expressed it my artistic side. And I didn't know what it was at the time until I got much older and got into middle school when I start exploring my creativity as in singing and acting together in one going on the stage knowing what to say how to say learning from the singers like Whitney Houston Janet Jackson Aretha Franklin then you think about the actors like Diane Curl Susan Lucci from All My Children you see a lot of them actors Denzel Washington is one of my favorite actors 
I follow him since I was 13. So I, he's like one of the role models I follow. And wow, it's just a lot. Holly Berry. Mm-hmm. Then you think about Vanessa Bell Calloway. She was a dark skinned girl, didn't get a lot of recognition, but she kept working as an actress. Loretta Devine. These are the women you, know, you look up to and try to be in the business, but also learning about yourself being a color girl. Because in Hollywood, they are rough. Mm-hmm. So, and saying and with that said, what um, kind of advice would you give a young aspiring actor? I will say, be true to yourself and be true to your craft. Mm-hmm. Be true to yourself is when you go in this business, know who you are first before you go in. Knowing that when you go in this business, you're not going to be the same person when you come out. When you go in there, you hold your head up high and you do your job. You go in there and learn everything you need to learn about acting, mm-hmm. every craft, every character. Just learn and keep working. Don't be afraid to be teachable. Don't be afraid to learn from your mistakes and accept criticism and learn how to go with the flow. Don't let nobody try to tell you you need plastic surgery or if you need this or that. Be who you are. Be healthy. Be unique. Self-love. Once you get that, the roles will come. The roles will come like out of nowhere. Sometimes you just got to put God first and they will come. And even then, it will come just like Vanessa Belkawa. She didn't think she was going to get the role coming to America, but she mm-hmm. went to a, a wig store and got a wig, that ponytail, and mm-hmm. just put it on and just did a few lines on that. And she got it. Sometimes that. it takes just one role. It can be a small, a few lines, and you can yeah. be a success. People can just see you out of nowhere. So just be yourself, be true to who you are and just keep practicing. Don't give up. When someone says no to you, that's okay. That's another door going to be open. That's another door that's going to come to you and do a lot. So that's how I say it. That's how I see it. Thank you. Yes. Awesome. Now, what is your (laughs) biggest motivation? I'm going to say my biggest motivation is God and my daughter. God, because he wakes me up every morning, you know, he gets me through the day. He makes sure that I'm okay. I mean, anytime I want to consult about something, I talk to my heavenly father first. I let him know, you know, listen, I need an increase in this or I need this. And he listens. And then I look at my daughter. She's five years old and she got special needs, but she motivates me every day, wants to be better as a human being, as a better parent, you know, baby to provide for her, baby to do the things that I never thought I could do. She gave me that motivation to do. Just keep pushing. If I could, if, if if she can be strong and the stuff that she's dealing with, I have to show her I'm strong too. So we have to do it together. And that's what gives me motivation to do what I do every day in acting in music or anything I touch. I love it. Oh, so um, so that sounds like um, so what is your strength in acting? What do you feel like? Are you open to all types of roles or do you have something that you like like to play um roles that per, that project pain or do you have something that you would like to to try different since i know that this is your first role um is there something that you would like to try different or just to try your hand at <laughs> um i play i could play any type of role the role i played in the beginning was a single mother and mm-hmm. I can relate to that. And, you know, a child being raped, molested, I've been through that experience as well. So I can relate to those two characters, Nicole, which is the daughter of Jackie. Mm-hmm. Um, I could play roles as in, you know, playing a prostitute or playing a drug addict or even just playing a role of a mother and just, you know, being married to a rich family. It's, it's what type of role is given to me. You got to be diverse when you're playing roles. You just can't be stuck in one area. You got to be diverse. One thing about Denzel Washington, he said, you got to be open to roles. You got to be open to diversity, even when it feels uncomfortable. You have to be diverse in it. How do, do you have a specific technique that you use to create a believable character? Um, the first thing I do, I pretend I'm in that situation or if I'm if I'm that character. I pretend if, if it were to happen to me, how I would react to it. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll look at the situation like, okay, this is like just for an example, like if a girl say, you know, she's been raped. I have to play the rape victim. I have to feel like I've been raped. I have to feel like what would I do if I was raped? And I have to act that character out and do what I need to do to play that role. And, how, and you know, if I'm scared or who I'm going to talk to, who I'm going to vent to, you know, these are the things that 
you would do if you was a rape victim. That's an example I can give. But that's a character I will play on how I will act or how I will fight or how I will do, how I will handle the situation. What would you say to your fans? I would say, you know, to my fans, I love them. Give me all your support. You know, support me. You know, I'm always listening to fans all the time. And if they tell me something, I say, okay, maybe I should try it this way. You know, fan loves are very important because that helps you grow as a character, but that helps you in your business when you out there pursuing roles. And it keeps you working. It keeps you relevant. That's the main thing. It keeps you relevant. Yeah. You got to show fans the love because they out there paying their money to see you. They out there want to support you. So you got to support them. You got to show them love. So that's, that's what it's all about. Showing them love. Them know I appreciate you for supporting me. Thank you. Well, how can people follow you? Um, I do have an Instagram. If you follow me, it'd be at Carmela81. And then I have a Facebook, you know, um, it's Carmela Brower or Tiffany Brower. So I do have that. People can follow me on that. Um, I don't have a Twitter. I do have a Twitter, but I haven't been on my Twitter in a while. So, but I do be on Instagram a lot as well as Facebook. So they can follow me there. Once I say over, I can put my stuff on Instagram and Facebook and I have a lot of people that follow me. So it shouldn't be a problem for somebody following me and everything else and seeing what I do. Do you have anything else that you'd like to say to, to um, the audience? I will say to my audience, you know, come out support this play, support this production. It's about to be real good. You never know what you're going to get. You're going to laugh. You're going to cry. You're going to feel what these ladies be going through and you're going to relate to it. And it's good. And it's, and you know what? You be with your family, you know, kids get in free and the ticket's only $25. So come on out support. Come on out support because we need you. We need your support. We want you to come see us. And come see your girl because I'm right there. I'm right here. Amen. <laughs> I got my daughter back. She's in there thinking. <laughs> She's in training now. That's right. That's right. Train her up. Train her up. Well, I thank the audience for tuning in with us. Um, our production is called Different Shades of Lipstick. It's going to be March 26th at 5 p.m. Mm -hmm. The doors open at 4.30. It's going to be at 5889 Jefferson Avenue in Newport News, Virginia. So make sure you get your tickets. You can get in-house tickets on Eventbrite or you can get them on book ticks. I'd like to thank both of you, Ms. LaShawn and Ms. Broward, for the interview today. Love you, ladies. Yes. Love you. <laughs> Love you. Different shades. Different shades of lipstick. Yes. yes. All right, thank you, everyone. Goodbye. Goodbye. Sure. Sure.